We are focusing today on Liberian literature. My guest today is Mr. Bamba Sharif. He uh, will be joining us from Vive Video in Netherlands or Holland. Mr. Sharif, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you very much, Dennis. All right. By, by way of a brief introduction, by way of brief introduction, Mr. Sherry was born in Liberia, that's uh, in Lufa County to be exact, and he spent part of his youth in Kuwait. During the first Gulf War, he fled to Jordan and then Syria where he lived for two years. Later, he moved to the Netherlands as a refugee and read law. In his novel, in his novels, Mr. Sherry, what he tries to do is to explore the themes of identity, exile, war, love, belonging, Islam, and the tensions within the religion between the moderates and the less moderate, the impact of history on people and the place of the, of the individual in society future prominently in his work. His novels have been published in many languages, including Dutch, English, French, Spanish, and German. He's a motivational speaker as well and an ambassador for the Dutch Refugee Council. He's passionate about films, which he reviews and presents. And he regards himself as a cosmopolitan. Explain that for us, Mr. Sherry. Yes, I regard myself as a cosmopolitan because um, I, I, I was born in Liberia, spoke many languages in Liberia. Uh, at home in, in Kola, Honlofa County, we um, spoke Madingo, Bandi, Mende, some Loma and Gisi. So I grew up in this very, very open family. And, um, you know, we, we members not only from Liberia, but from Guinea and Sierra Leone. And I left Liberia and moved to Kuwait where I studied Arabic and, and sat in class with people from India, from the United States. Uh, from different parts of the world. I mean, in Kuwait, there were more than 120 nationalities. And, uh, and I was interacting with these people from all over the world. And um, lived in Syria, experienced, you know, the Syrian hosp hospitality. And also, um, you know, experienced uh, firsthand what it meant to to live under the Assad regime, the father, Hafiz al Assad, the father. And two years later, moved from, um, from Syria to the Netherlands uh, and, and began to learn a new language, you know, Dutch, in which I write now. So most of my novels are first published in Dutch. So I mean, having experienced all these things, I regard myself as a cosmopolitan, as a man of the world, as someone who values not only the culture in which I was born, the Liberian culture, but different cultures of the world. I, uh, I am attracted to some Asian, uh, some uh, cultures of Asia. I, um, uh, as a child, I read a lot about uh, the Tibetan Buddhism. Uh, I, I read the Bible. I even read the Torah. And so there are many things, and many aspects in these cultures that are really, really very, uh, uh, that I can relate to. And they are prof the, the, these different beliefs and cultures have things in right. common. And um, so these are, the re these are the reasons why I call myself a cosmopolitan. I, I, I agree with you, definitely. I agree with you. N now, uh, talking about, even before we get into our discussion, you've written many books, yes. including Born to Secrecy, yes. The Land of the Fathers, The Witness, The Black Napoleon. I, I want to read that. So mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about The Black Napoleon. Summarize that for me, if you don't mind. Yes, I, I don't think you can summarize it in, in a few words, but um, The Black Napoleon is a novel that had occupied me for more than 10 years. Um, the, the story uh, of The Black Napoleon is a story 
that is well known in West Africa. It's the story of Samori Toure, uh, one of the greatest uh, emperors of Africa. In fact, he was the greatest emperor of West Africa in the second half of the 19th century. Right. I, 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 saw, uh, I, I, I saw some of his uh, pictures or a monument when I was in uh, Guinea. Yes. He's, yes. He's so what, 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 is, what is so what is so sad about summary um, story is that it's not well known in the West. And this is a man, what his achievement is far greater than that of Chaka Zulu. Chaka Zulu was uh, a conqueror of the Zulu nation. And that's it. But somebody, I mean, he conquered large swaths of land. I mean, extending from Sierra Leone, like part of Liberia, Guinea, Mali, Ivory Coast, Burkina Faso, uh, you know, goes deep into West Africa. And his oh. influence was went far beyond um, this, the boundaries that he conquered. And this is a man who fought the French for uh, more than 20 years. And, and the English too. And, and so I, I, I look around, I, there was no, even in French, French speaking in Africa, there, nothing had been written. I mean, when, in a novel form, in a, in, a, in a book form, there are a lot of history, historical I mean, books about this man, but nothing in fiction. So I decided to, uh, uh, there are here and there, for example, Amadou Kroma, the Avorian writer, mention him in one of his novels, but that nothing has been written in a novel form about him as a, as a figure, as a main character. But- And, and you also wrote, uh, and I, this reminds me of the one written by uh, Mr. Vasiki Kone, you also yes. wrote Land of My Fathers. Yes. What are you yes. about in that book? Yeah, indeed. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me just finish something I wanted to say about okay. uh, this, the Black Napoleon. The Black Napoleon is not only about summary, it's about a boy who is actually to me, the Black Napoleon, uh, who left uh, modern day Liberia. He's, he's from the Pele, from the Pele people. His name is Zaiwolo. Zaiwolo left what is now Liberia, I mean, in the 19th century, it was not entirely part of Liberia. He left uh, that the forest, let me just say, and what is now Liberia and went to Guinea, what is now Guinea and met this great, uh, great king and emperor, Samori Ture. And, and Samori recognized aspect of, his, uh, of himself in this boy. I remember Samori's mother, uh, Samori on his mother's side, the mother came from uh, the people, you know, the, 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 the lamas of Liberia. And so he had this connection with the forest or with Liberia. I just want to show the, the you know, the, the, the diversity and the things that we, we share, you know? Right. Because now, nowadays, because of boundaries, we look at uh, people across the border, we say, oh, they're they are foreigners, or they're not even related to us. But when in fact, we have so, so much in common. That is, that is, and uh, going back uh, to, the, to, to the first question about uh, Land of My Fathers, I wrote this novel 19 years ago. I wrote it because land of my fathers. I wrote it because there were so many things that were, that were happening in Liberia that, I, that really confused me. Uh, the war, every day I was a refugee here in the Netherlands and I was seeing uh, terrible images of the war in Liberia. And I was confused. I was like, I mean, why is a country that was so um, that was seen as a symbol in, in, in the entire Africa. You know, why would such a country wage war on itself? You know, we had this whole saying in Liberia, I born here, I die here, you know? And you know, why were those people living in, 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 in droves, you know, in, in, in the thousands, you know, fleeing from, 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 from that country and seeking asylum elsewhere. And so, to answer those questions, I thought I had to go back to the beginning of the founding of Liberia and the interaction of the uh, settlers with the natives. Some things went wrong. And I thought I could address those things, not only, you know, 
the, the differences, but the things that we had in common or the natives had in common with the settlers. So that's, 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 uh, that's how it came about. You know, I, 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 uh, the novel came out of this, you know, this despair, out of the desperation, out of the need to explain Liberia to myself. And that's, that's why I wrote that novel. And it changed my life because it became a very successful novel in the Netherlands. It um, launched my career. And after nearly 19 years, going to 20 years, can you imagine? This book is now being translated into, uh, into uh, many languages. And also uh, I will be going to India in July to launch the book there. It has been translated in one of the Indian languages. So I'm mm. very grateful to God for that. I mean, right. I wrote when I was a refugee, uh, very leading an uncertain life, uh, not sure whether I will live here or I will find security here in the Netherlands, not sure about the future of Liberia when the war was, you know, was going to end. But I wrote such a book at that time and it's still being recognized in other places in the world. I mean, I'm, I'm very, very grateful for that. Thank you. And I'm grateful and I'm very proud of that achievement. I'm very, very proud of, of, of that, proud of you. So uh, if you just joining us, we are discussing Liberian literature tonight. My guest is Mr. Vamba Sharif from the Netherlands. He's a Liberian who's currently living in the Netherlands. Our other guest uh, is Weatu Moore. She have been here, but due to some emergency situation, she's not with us tonight. So we are hoping to bring Weatu on next time because she's another prominent Liberian author and we wanted to really, really have her tonight. But uh, we have uh, Vama tonight. So let's begin the discussion. Uh, we jump right into your books because uh, <laughs> I wanted for my audience to know who I'm talking with, Vamba, who's uh, he's, uh, he's written a lot of books, including The Black Napoleon, The Witness, Land of My Father, so forth and so on. And they've been published as he narrated in so in uh, other languages. So Mr. Sherry, let's go back and say, since we are discussing literature, what is literature? I think um, literature is a body of work um, that consists of different disciplines that has some quality and a lasting merit. I think, um, and by that def definition, I mean that uh, the oral literature belongs, uh, you know, to this to this literature then to this definition. Right. Because people tend to define literature as just something that is written once it is written down uh, in the form of uh, fiction, nonfiction, poetry, uh, drama, and other, you know, essays and things, then it's literature. But I want to emphasize that uh, oral, oral literature is in fact uh, a, a literature and should be taken very seriously. And I say that because historically, when uh, uh, the, the the white people, uh, you know, came in in, in contact with uh, with Africans, and Africans had this uh, oral literature, these stories they told of their kings and queens, their rulers, they were not taken seriously. They were saying, "Oh, you mean you don't write? Yeah, you don't have written words, so we don't take your literature seriously." But these uh, stories, now we know, and we've known for a long time that these stories were really true, and uh, that these stories were kept by people who were uh, very, very hardworking, and who were you know, people who had this um, responsibility to guide the world, you know? Right. Uh, guardians of the world. Those were the people. Those were the people who were tasked with that responsibility. And they've been doing this for centuries. We know, for example, now that uh, Sundiata Keita, one of the founders of the greatest empires in the world, the histories have been you know, told from one generation to another for more than a thousand years nearly. And so we, we are taking this, the oral aspect of literature very, very seriously because we have that in Liberia. Most of our stories were told to us 
uh, orally, you know, transmitted from father to son, uh, mother to daughter, father to daughter, from one generation to another. And, and so if we take that into responsibility, then we can realize that Liberian literature doesn't, uh, did not begin with novels waiting, you know, by one, for example, one uh, massacre in the, in the beginning of the 20th century or in the 19th century. Right. But it goes further, it goes deeper into, into, into our past, you know, and, um, and so when, when, when we talk about literature or Liberian literature in general, I mean, I will like to pause to say, all right, it is not only about books written in English or in French or even in one of the languages in Liberia, but that literature is also, uh, oral literature is also part of that literature. But there is also another, another literature that is not, uh, that is completely ignored. And that is the literature written in Arabic by uh, people who are part of our, our Liberia, who, is, who are part of our cultures. And this, this literature where uh, sometimes fiction or travelogues or even uh, poems, they were mostly poems because most of those scholars uh, were great po uh, poets and they wrote not only about what they saw, but they meditated on life and they wrote some praise songs about, uh, about their teachers. So that's one aspect of Liberian literature. And then you come to- uh, and, and, and we, we will come to that before, you know, that's literature, but so specifically now, and you already started talking about it, Mm -hmm. so specifically now, what is Liberian literature and how is it different from other national? Yes, yeah. Liberian literature is not that different from any other uh, literatures all around the world. I don't think it's that different. Our tradition might be different because our experience, we are a country that was not really colonized in this, you know, the sense of the word. I mean, like the British or the English being uh, I mean, the British or the French being present, you know, that classical definition of colonization. But uh, it has its own uh, tradition. It's, uh, it started, uh, I mean, when we are coming modern time, um, Liberian literature now, it started with the founding of Liberia and with uh, letters written by the settlers, you know, to, to, to the, the families in the United States. And some of these letters were very dis, dis, descriptive in nature. They tried to describe life and feelings uh, on a different soil, you know. So this, that's, the, that's the early literature of Liberia. And then you saw um, a, 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 a Vi, a, one Masakoi who wrote a novel about a Liberian girl who took matters in her own hand to try to, who rose up against the authority and fled so that she could not marry the man, you know, who she was forced to marry. And, um, and you can see that from that novel, you can see that uh, this very um, independent uh, spirit of Liberian women so he, that's, the, that's the first novel. Actually, people even say that's the first African novel. It was written before Achibi. It was written before uh, Rene Malan, uh, the, 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 the African writer who wrote uh, Bataula and long before Achibi wrote Things Fall Apart. So people consider it as the first African novel. And then, um, yes, there was a, a long, Labs. There was a long, you know, stress of silence. Nothing, nothing really was happening. But there were poem, poets, and the people were writing short stories and things, and um, you know, perhaps novels. But they were not really that known. And then until um, writers like Baiti Moore uh, came on the scene, and um, and all over Liberia, we who grew up in the eighties. Um, even in the 90s, people know who, who the writer of uh, Murder in the Cassava Pash right. uh, was. Uh, and I mean, I grew up with that story. 
I'm very critical of the story now. I think writing more was a great po I mean, poet. He was a great, uh, I mean, he, the, and also the prose in modern Cassava Pash is beautiful. And, um, and, uh, and then, yes, you have this great writer beside Baltimore, uh, Wito Sankawolo, uh, who wrote many, many novels and folk tales, short stories. I think he was a great master of Liberian fiction. Right. Uh, I had the privilege of meeting him. And I went to his place and uh, I shared uh, some, a few hours with him. It was, it was really great man to really listen to. And um, I, years later, I even discovered that the subject of my first novel, Land of, Land of My Fathers, the hero of my first novel, Hale, or the Bandi say Halengi, that um, Wilton Sankawala wrote the, the, the legend of uh, Halingi. And uh, the Hale story is well known in, um, in Northern uh, Liberia. And uh, now I realize that Sankawala who, I mean, who came from Bon, uh, bon County, that he, also, he was also aware of this story. So you see different um, aspect of Hale story. You know, and it is also, I discovered um, when I read um, Sanka, Wilton Sankabalo's account of Halingi story, that he actually mixed it with a, with a legend that is about the founding of a city in now present day Guinea, it is called Misadu. And the exact legend about the founding of this, that city, uh, it is being repeated why people? Why um, Sankalo was telling the story of Halingi, of, of Halingi. and it's, it's, it's so. I mean, it just go to show how I mean one legend, you know, affects or takes on different aspects. You know, when right. when people migrate, when people move from one place to another, they they take on a different aspect of that legend, and it becomes part of their re reality, and they they perceive it as 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 the truth or as the the, the best version, yeah. you know. And um, so, I mean, uh, and it was, it, was, uh, it was really very eye-opening because the story I grew up with uh, in, in, in Lofa or in Kola was about Halinga was quite different from what uh, White what, what Sanka would have, would have said. And mm -hmm. that same legend, um, uh, aspect of that legend is also to be found in Sierra Leone. So you have three countries, mm -hmm. Liberia, Guinea, and Sierra Leone have, you know, sharing one legend, but you know, told in different aspects, right. you know? And, uh, and, and it's very, you know, when you read these histories, um, it's, so, it's, 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 so, it's so fascinating. Right, you know? and that's the beauty I, of uh, oral history, everyone presenting it from their own yeah, perspective. Yeah, yes, from their own, pers uh, from their own perspective. And it's, but it has, what, uh, it has a, a singular source because mm -hmm. the source is, you know, they go back to the source, you know, but then what, I mean, the source is just one, but then you have different branches of the same story, you know? And, uh, and so, I mean, Halingi's story, I mean, when I discovered that, I mean, I had, I had profound respect for us, uh, for Wito Sankawala before I, I read all, all his novels. But then when I recently discovered uh, this, you know, and I was, I, was, I was really happy that, you know, to see that, to know that he was also concerned with this legend. And um, what I did, was to play with this legend, to play with the fact, the story of Halenge is that there was a threat of war in Bandi land. And, um, and, and the Oracle said that someone had to sacrifice himself uh, to avert the war. So, I mean, uh, and people were looking, they were looking weeks, some people say months, or days, you know, whatever. But at a certain point, this man, Halingi, stood up and he said, I will sacrifice myself to avert war. You know, so I wrote, uh, I wrote this, I mean, I, I took this story and I placed it, you know, within the context of the Liberian Civil War. Right. You know, someone who, you know, sacrificed himself in the 19th century to say, all right, I want peace in the land. I don't want war. And the irony of history is after a century of that, sacrifice, war comes, you know, and the question would be, 
you know, and the question I tried to answer and to try to deal with in land of my father was, what would be the reaction of the descendants of this man, you know, born in a country at war, you know, what are their responsibilities? How did the peoples who Liberians look at them? You know, so I made them like a symbol, as a symbol of people right. who have preached peace from the beginning, who wanted peace from the very beginning of the war, who didn't want this bloody war. You know, so it's it's a book. It's I see it as a kind of an act, an act of love, a labor of love right. for Liberia. But uh, that's that's uh, Sankawalo. And uh, no, uh, Obama. Yes, it, it, it's important you mentioned that because, and that brings me to the question that uh, what role then can literature play? Because you are, we look at literature that uh, you know we are reading poems and stories and things like that, but there's a profound uh, uh, meaning to them because you are trying to talk about war. This. So what role does literature play when it comes to peace, reconciliation, our mm. national growth and development? Because mm. you are already hinting on that. Yes. I think the literature can, can really um, shape our way of thinking uh, because we know things, terrible things happen in the war, uh, during the war. But if people write about it and these stories are shared among us, then we can realize that your suffering you know, was my suffering. I can, I can be able to, to empathize with you. I can be able to, to feel you. You know, I can be able to go through your suffering. That's what literature does. And not only that, it can even, it can give, even give us, you know, uh, some hope, you know, yeah. it can give us, it can show us that, all right, we've gone through all this, but we have a future to share. A shared future, so a future. So what what are we going to do about it? So that's what literature does. And don't forget, I mean, literature is say shaping how we look at the world. You know, we are reading books set in the United States. You are in the United States, uh, in, in in Georgia. There are books set there, and it, it really changes how you look at Georgia or how you look at the United States through the books that you read. You know, most of the nineteenth century and how they look at Africa was shaped by the books that they read, you know, and it's still being fed, you know, that image in the West about how Africa looked, is still being fed by the media and the books that are still written about Africa. So if we can write books and tell our own stories, it might help us, it might help shape our future, you know, so it's very, 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 very important that we read our authors, we read our writers, you know, people who, you know, try to shape our experience into a uh, a form of art to, to something that we can really, really identify with is I cannot underestimate it. You know, I cannot, you know, emphasize it. You know, much more than that. It's it's right. very, very, very important. Reading, not only writing more uh, his poems, but we have, for example, a great. I mean, maybe we'll come to that later. But we have some great writers beside the the, the those great ones who precede. Pre uh, uh, preceded us. You know, right. We have some writers now who are doing their best. So I can, I mean, uh, it, it, sometimes it's a shame that, uh, you know, some of those books written by, for example, by Sanka, he had a new novel, I think it was published before his death or shortly after his death. Uh, these are books that we need or children, you know, need to read. Uh, every high school student need to read. Uh, every university student need right. to read, needs to read. So we need all those books. They are very, very important to us. So, I mean, actually literature, I mean, when I say I'm a cosmopolitan, uh, when I say I belong to the world, it is because of literature. It's not because I sat in class and um, with people from Japan and different kind of uh, different parts of the world. No, because of the books that I read about these countries. I mean, they make me to understand and to appreciate their cultures. Because then when you read literature, then you can be able to identify with a Japanese and his suffering or a Chinese and his suffering or an American or someone even from Mongolia because literature makes that novels and fiction makes that possible, you know, or even memoirs, you know, Latin American literature, I feel at home there, Russian. I mean, I mean, I like some aspect of Russia today 
but the writers they produce emphasize my humanity. You know, I celebrate them, you know, so we should be celebrating our own writers. We should be celebrating um, uh, Wito Sankawalo, Baiti Moore. We should be, I mean, we should have um, uh, prizes, you know, in their names. Right. Really. That's I, had a, I, I had a, I had a, I had a, I interviewed someone from Bundy Land and it, because who spoke about Holly, the person mm -hmm. who, you know, volunteer himself to be sacrificed for the common good of the people. Yes. So I, there was a, a historian, a librarian historian on this show who made mention of Halley. Now it's, it's fascinating that you mentioned that too. That brings me into the point that uh, literature too has a role when it comes to writing Liberian history. Oh, yes. Your comments. Oh, yes, yes. It can, help, it, it, it can help us look at history in a, in a different light because in, I mean, this historian who, who mentioned Halley, but I just maybe spent an, I mean, an hour on it, you know? But uh, what literature does, what fiction does is to give a face to Halley, is to give feelings to Halley, is to, is to make you see him interacting with his, with his people, with people he loved. You know, it might be an imaginary Halley, might not be exactly, you know, the, the historical Halley, but it might make you, you know, it, it, it makes him alive in front of right. you and you begin to see him and to identify with his suffering and to see, you know, to be, to be with him when he's going through this process because one cannot just stand up and say, all right, I'm gonna sacrifice myself to avert war, you know, for the good of the land. It takes courage. Where does that courage come from? And after the courage, you know, even after we've taken decisions, you know that we are beset with doubts. You know, so how do you deal with these doubts? You know, uh, even if in the Bible, <laughs> the, 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 the Jesus Christ was, you know, was even after he knew what he was going to do, he was filled with doubts. Mm -hmm. And um, and so the, so I, uh, I, I, I mean, I, I, I tried to, to give, you know, to describe this whole process of a man who takes such a decision. You know, give him a face, give him a wife. What happens to the child he leaves behind? Right. What happens to this to the wife? You know, you know, because it is it is one thing to, to have a hero, but you know, what happens if this hero you know goes on just doing this heroic heroic deeds, uh, deeds? Because then you we the people around him are the ones who are going to suffer. Right. You know, they are the ones who are going to feel the pain. He is most of all feeling that pain, but it's terrible to see, to lose someone you love. You know, so that's the Halle I described. That's uh, Vama, you, you got a, you got a, a Halle here from uh, Dr. Patricia Wesley of Librarian Poesy. Hey, Vamba. Yes, so yes. I, I, I actually wanted to, uh, when we're talking about great Liberian writers, she is uh, absolutely the, the, the a poet laureate of Liberia. She is, I mean, I, her poems are so great. I, 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 what I do as part of my um, rituals in the morning is that before, before, I, before I start writing, I do read, I mean, po poems because they are so inspiring. It, it gives me, I mean, I, I, I feel at ease, you know, when I read and I read most, most of us poems, you know, before I do that, it's, it's, it's become a ritual to me, oh, you know, wow. so I know, I know her poems very well and I appreciate her. I, she is uh, someone we should celebrate because she is up there with, with and San Cavolo and, uh, and by two more. And uh, yes, yes, yes. We, we, oh. I, I mean, uh, her poems should be part of the curriculum. Right. Yes. And, and we'll come to that. Why we're not really having it the way we all think that uh, these librarian uh, novels and writing being part of what we know today as in our part of our curriculum. But talking about librarian literature, since we not much is out there for in no much is out there, but not much have been read by mm. our own uh, citizens on librarian literature. I want us to take a step back and delve a little bit more into it, some kind of teaching. You know, our literature has different genre. Mm -hmm. You know, so let's take and if you know on top of your head some of these genre and how some of these books fit into them. 
For instance, we have folklore, we have graphic novels, mm -hmm. we have uh, poetry, drama, prose, and all these things. So what are some of the labyrinth books you know that are in each of those genres? Uh, I, I mean, I, I will begin with the writers because then, then it's better to start with the writers and then- uh, Let's do that. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. There are, um, in Liberia, for example, uh, James Dualo, he is writing a lot of short stories. Uh, Wari Yowan Rabot is a great, great poet and, and short story. Um, I read one of his short stories and it was beautiful. It was beautiful. And, uh, and yeah, yeah, of course you have uh, Hawa Jande who uh, has written crime novels and uh, she wrote an essay that won the uh, a prize. She's very, 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 very talented. And she is on the ground. She is in Monrovia and um, a great talent. And, uh, and uh, Sa Milimono, who came second in a, an African uh, Kwani manuscript uh, prize. A great, great, great talent. Uh, I think if, if he's given the opportunity, he can astound us all. Um, and uh, I hope he, his, 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 his book, he wrote a book, uh, a very beautiful novel set uh, in the war, in, uh, uh, during the war, the Liberian Civil War. And I can really, really recommend it. Sa is in Morovia and uh, he needs to be read. And uh, if the government is interested in really, really sharing and being, sharing our literature, and inspiring uh, our youth and children with, um, you know, writings by young Liberian writers. Uh, Sa's book is one of them. And, uh, and of course, Wyatu Moore, who is coming with a, a beautiful novel. Uh, she will be keen in, uh, in, November, in September. So she is uh, uh, one of the treasures of Liberia. Uh, so we have um, uh, many books, you know, mm -hmm. Sa's books, uh, Boy Interrupted, Uri Yowan's poems, and uh, Professor um, Patricia Gebe Wesley's, you know, collections of, uh, of, of poems. Uh, these books, you know, really need to be read because when you go to library, I don't know, you find uh, books written by Americans and some, some of these cultures, although they were writing, some of the stories are were writing, but I, I mean, a Liberian child, I mean, would easily identify with the story set in Morovia mm. or, or in Maryland or, you know, in Cape Mount or something, than, uh, than a story that is set in far Alaska. I mean, let us start with the, um, with those stories that we written by Liberians, let us start with those reading those stories first because it feeds our imagination. It makes us to look at ourselves, you know, anew. Because I mean, it's like when you read a, a literature from your country, it's like you're looking at yourself in a mirror, you know, and um, and empathizing and seeing, you know, going on a journey with someone who you can really identify with. You know, so what uh, does that uh, what does that do if we don't read literature from our own country and we are reading you know those are beautiful or things for a part and mm -hmm. only so you have a book mm -hmm. and the ones in the Google White Tango all those are beautiful but what does it do to us if we're not reading literature from our own country? It's um, it's really um, it affects our development and our consciousness as a people as a nation. Uh, you know, because uh, there is something that is Liberia, you know, we, there, there are things that, that reunite us as Liberians that, that makes us quite unique from any, <laughs> any people in this entire world. So if you see that these things are absent in, in books or that, or that people don't even pause to reflect on those things and appreciate it, then it's a sign of uh, it's a sign of poverty. It's a sign. It's a sign of uh, um, defi uh, deficit in, uh, in 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 culture, cu culture wise, and and also in history. Because when you read literature, you begin to appreciate history. You begin to 
you know, to, to, to look at things from different perspectives. This is what it does to us. So, I mean, uh, I mean, it's good to read, to read Achibi and uh, Kamara Lai and all these others, great writers, but let us start with our writers first. And there are good books out there. So it's not, it's not, this, it's not, it's not like, I mean, librarians have not written good books. I mean, Professor uh, Wesley's poems are, 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 can stand this, you know, the, the test of time or the test of literature anywhere. You know, you can read it in Japanese and he can identify with the quality and uh, the message, you know. So those books should be, should be, the hard books should be read, you know, mm -hmm. in Liberia. So it's, 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 it's really if this continuous, uh, uh, you know, ignorance or, uh, you know, to continue to ignore uh, the, the role Liberian writers are playing uh, in shaping the Liberian culture is, 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 it's very, very sad, you know. Right. So in your, in your mind now, what is the state of Liberian literature? Uh, it, it, I think it's, it's going the right, in the right direction because you have very ambitious writers, young writers, and, uh, and, and great contributors uh, towards the Liberian literature. But we need, as I said, you know, uh, we need support, not, not necessarily from the government, but from the librarians, you know, to really pause not only librarians in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Liberia, but in the United States, you know, to read Liberian literature, you know, to, 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 to make it like a kind of, you know, ritual, like every day, I mean, the, to read this, the stories. Wita Sankawale's, Sankawale's um, folk tales. These are stories that we, you can read to a child, you know, uh, it, it, anywhere, you know, in the United States or Australia, librarians to read, to be reading these books, you know. And, um, and also in Liberia at school, uh, they, we should be, we should be reading these books. It's and very, what is, very important. Why is that not happening? What do you think? Why, why, why it's not happening? Because we've never really paid uh, our, our governments and, and our scholars, uh, the educated uh, librarians have not really, uh, you know, paid much attention to that, you know, because if you or take it, uh, or see it as a priority, because if you start to perceive something as very important as part of your life, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then, then you, what you try to do is to, you know, to try to emphasize it, to try to share, you know, that 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 that's, that perception, you know, and uh, and that has not been happening, right. and and it's it's that's very very sad, you know, uh, and what what I hope uh, uh, people who have the means will do, uh, for example, where tomorrow has a, a bookstore in like. And Liberia now, and those are the things you know that we. These are the initiatives that we, we we encourage, you know. And we should have a national library, for example, that is accessible to to all of us. Not only, you know, uh, you have to be you have to go to the university to have access to a library, but it should be there, you know. And people should go there and sit and read, you know. Right. That's that could be a target, and mm -hmm. um, yes. So instead of uh, campaigning to hold, you know, to be a minister or something else, you know, one could campaign to, to, to have a library in Morovia, you know, that is accessible to people from all part of Morovia and Liberia, you know, and, uh, yes, yeah. I remember, um, uh, my father left many books and but most of those books were burned during the war. And uh, my brothers had planned to open a library so those books would be read, you know, but the plan was not carried out. So the war came and, and the books were destroyed. So I regret that, you know. Hmm. So perhaps one day I might go on to do what my father or my brothers planned to do, you know, set up a library right. in Morovia. 
and that, that, uh, that would be good. I, I too, uh, you know, talking about the, especially the curriculum. Mm. I, I've heard stories of people who publish their books. They go to Liberia to get them, maybe through the Ministry of Education, and they have some challenges getting them to be part of the curriculum. Really? So those are on the individual individual level. Has a group, you know, has a group of librarian writers or authors. What do you think the approach can be to get this book in our school system? I think we should we should we should we should all go in as one voice, you know. Then perhaps we then then we then we carry more weight, tell the Liberian government the importance of sharing these stories with 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 our people. Uh, with Liberia. So I, 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 I would say to come together and we are in touch with with um, with one another. So it's not that difficult. To, to take such an in, such an initiative to really try to, to change that because it, I mean it's it's not like those writers are trying to sell themselves what they're trying to do is, is to say look I this the, I wrote this book and it's part of uh, uh, this culture and this is a book that is uh, that has some qualities so I would like to share this uh, this book with um, so the Liberian people, the Liberian children. So it's not be that difficult. I'll, I mean, I don't know how politics works. I don't know how the, those ministries works, what are the uh, criteria and things. I don't know, but uh, it will be great to see how it works and yeah. uh, of whether it is possible to include some of those books. And, and to look at the current curriculum and see whether some of the books that are on the list are relevant to the, uh, to the development of, the Liberian child, right. you know, yeah. And if it is, if they are not, because I mean, I grew, I grew up in Kolaho reading books uh, about written by American, white American about Indians. I mean, I would rather have read a book written by an Indian about life, you know, under, I mean, under the occupation of the, of the white Americans, or I read a book about um, like a librarian, I mean, in life on the, in the forest, which was very close to me, they reading, reading those books, you know, that were so very situated, very far away. I mean, I cannot right. say that they, they were not of some benefit or so importance to me. They were, but it's much, much better to read our own stories and to, because it becomes part of the culture. Then the children grow up and then you know, uh, uh, and then uh, tell these stories to their children, and it's part of it. In Holland here, there are, I mean, some Dutch classics that are read in every school. They have 18 million people. So you have a whole list, you know, of these Dutch classics. They might not be, these books might not be known outside of, the, um, the outside, outside of Holland or the Netherlands, but they don't care. They, they regard these books as classics it's classic. and they read yeah. them. Yes, they read them. It's part of the curriculum. It's actually over and over. You have different publishers that are publishing these books over and over. Every time a child reaches a certain age, I mean, if elementary school, sorry, elementary to high school, they read these books. Mm. So that should be also be part of, part of uh, I mean, people should, I mean, I hope that one day the book, uh, Bighty Mouse shows, I mean, poems can be republished. Sankawala's books can be part of the curriculum. And uh, Professor, Professor Whistler's book can be part of the curriculum. And so that we can, you know, grow up because, I mean, there are a few uh, poets, but I think there are more uh, writers and poets in Liberia. And why is that? Because we are not, we don't have, uh, we, are, we don't have access to uh, books by Professor Wesley or other librarian poet. Because then, if a child sees that book, say, "Oh, you know, this is this is a librarian a lady who wrote this book, uh, this book of poems." Perhaps I have a future in writing po uh, poems, and or I could even base, I could be even be inspired by by, by her books. You know, yes. And then after you know all these books, then you can start to you know to branch out. You can start to read other books by other writers, United States, Latin America, Europe, Asia, 
like I did, you know? So, mm. I mean, I went through this whole process. I mean, I grew up with Hallinger stories, you know, with uh, spiders stories. And and then, I mean, with the Sankawa stories, mm. writing all this murder in the cassava page. And then, right. and then I started to read, I started to read the classic of all literature, you know, The Thousand and One Nights, Thomas Mann's, you know, Penguin classics and Russian I mean, literature, Dostoevsky, Tolstoy, Chekhov, and, you know, Bogakov and others, and American writers. So I just, that's how, you know, you start somewhere. Right, you know, right. Yeah. And, it, it, uh, if you are just joining us, this is Focus on Liberia. We are discussing Liberian literature. My guest is Mr. Vamba Sharif. He's a, a publisher and author, and uh, he's joining us from the Netherlands. Uh, Mr. Sharif, reading has to start uh, from a very young age. Are there some children books being authored by Liberian authors? And uh, do, we, do we have those books? And uh, what, what is the, the future you know, of the Liberian child? How do we get them to engage, to, to read, especially materials written by librarians? Yes, I, I, uh, I did not go, grow up uh, reading children's book by written by librarians. I don't remember. Um, I remember that some books came from Sierra Leone. Uh, there, there might have been some books, written, children's book written by librarians then, but there are now a few books written by uh, I mean, uh, librarians. There is this uh, publishing house um, founded by Wyatt Moore. And uh, one of the books uh, is written by a, a very, very good friend of mine, um, Raphael Pelly. It's called uh, Gwagwa. Or, and it's about corruption. It tries to tackle the issue of corruption in, Li in, in Liberia. And so this actually, this, that's a book that you, a child can read like, I don't know, in, in an hour or something or even less, you know, a very accessible book. So there are other children's book right out there. And, uh, uh, and reading, reading, readings uh, need to be encouraged. People, we need to encourage our children to read, you know, and sometimes it surprised me that, I don't know, perhaps it's because of circumstances you know, the people, the, the, the main source of worry is how to get their food, you know, and they don't have time to read. Sometimes I can understand that, but um, it's very sad to see that someone has graduated from high school and, uh, and you see that, you know, this person has, don't have access to, uh, didn't have access to, I mean, good novels or good mm -hmm. books that are easily available or could have been easily available to him or her. That's very, very, very sad. And it has to do uh, with the fact that it didn't begin from the very beginning when the child was in, in his, you know, uh, from, I mean, eight or I mean, five, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know, we don't have that culture right. when, uh, in which people are, are encouraged to read. You know, but I think it, that that's where it begins because the more you read, you know, the more the more the more uh, the more access you get to the world, the more you begin to understand what is happening around the world. And, and, and Bama, you, you mentioned something very profound that literature is not just books. So we have no. oral literature. So yes. and uh, I was born in the village, mm -hmm. you know, southeastern Liberia, and the stories that were told to me around the fire or under the moonlight, mm -hmm. I still remember. And yes. that influenced some of the work that I do, some of the writings and uh, the things that I do. Yeah. Uh, what is your suggestion in how we can institutionalize oral literature so that even in a place where we don't have access to books, those can be a source that our mm -hmm. children learn these stories and you know get an eye open into literature? Indeed. I think we should collect them. I think we should collect them. We should... Uh, some of us, the writers, should make it a task to go around, to travel to, around Liberia and collect this, these stories. And then you see by going through Liberia that some of these stories are, are similar and then combine them, you know, join these similar stories with, it, with, you know, get rid of the differences, the things that they share, collect these stories. And, it, and, and, and they will make a great reading, you know, and, 
uh, I, I mean, there is this Italian writer, Italos uh, Calvino, who, um, one of the greatest writers uh, of Italy, who went about through Italy from one village to another collecting it it Italian folk tales, you know, and they're so beautiful. They are so well written and they're mm. so common. You read them and there's some stories that, that are so very Liberian, you know? So you see that uh, wh what we share, and I'm sure if these uh, uh, the stories collected around Liberia, when they are published, you will see that there's that how, you know, that we, we have so much in common. And mm -hmm. they were just, so a child growing up in Lofa, we read these kind of stories and say, my God, this story, I mean, is said in Maryland, and it's the same story that I, I grew up with. And someone else, we, we read it from Morovia and, and you know, and and appreciate you know the the the, the common themes right. that we that, that we share we all share as librarians so it's it's uh, it's also part of that you know that wealth the source of wealth it makes us to be I mean to be a better better human beings it makes right. us to be to feel proud of of being librarians and, and I can relate I can relate to that or uh, Vamba. So uh, I think there was a Facebook post. I posted on Facebook on uh, mm -hmm. the love letters we wrote as children, even the overall letters. Yes. You know, I'm very, you know, if it takes me a great pleasure to compose the few words of mine, you know. Which I hope will be in good condition. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then also the love letters, you know, or I love you like fish love water. Love, love, fish love water. <laughs> so, so from from Cape Mount to Cape Palmas, we all wrote like that. Yes, they are. What that tells me is uh, there should be some common thread when yes. it comes to these things. Yes. I don't know yes. if we yeah. found that, so that yes. be able to uh, put that into books. Yes, and and that's that's our challenge with the writers to find to find to 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 find that common thread, you know, and to really to really reveal it, you know. So that we 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 the readers uh, can uh, the readers can see that's our challenge, you know, because I think we need to be honest in uh, in in our writings, you know. I think we you, you, you can only reveal that thread when we are very honest, and uh, in our writings when we celebrate, you know, life in our writings, but also touch on those sensitive issues um, without really. Uh, you know, uh, dehumanizing right. uh, others, you know, because uh, Carlos Fuente said when uh, people were talking about, oh, those savages, he said, well, we've all proven that we, 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 we can be savages. We've all proven, although with the so-called civilizations, that we can be as terrible as any other group of people in this world. I mean, referring to the West. So, I mean, before you start pointing your finger, you should first look at yourself and your history, you know? And so literature, I mean, by celebrating life, does not mean you, you, you can ignore uh, the challenges and those issues that are, uh, that are very, very deep and profound and that, that are in many aspects say very divisive. You can write about it, and showed and reveal such a story from different perspectives, mm. you know, and uh, it can really unite us. I, I really yes, do. yes, 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 because uh, literature can be a form of therapy. People do say that, you know, people, people do, and it's really true. For me, writing is a kind of therapy. I, uh, I wrote Land of My Fathers at a point that was very, very difficult for me. Uh, a young man in the Netherlands, very confused, very uncertain about the future. You know, didn't know uh, where I was going, where I was heading, where Liberia was heading, not in touch with the family home there. Uh, so I, you know, I had to go back and, you know, search, you know, deeply in myself, you know, and, and, and that's, the search and the, 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 the that journey that I made was was in that is in the literary form through writing, 
it was as if by writing about Liberia, by confronting some of the difficulties that the country faced, that I was actually, uh, you know, on the way to healing myself, to dealing with that aspect, that terrible and very difficult aspect of my life. Mm -hmm. So it, it, reading can be a kind of therapy. Right. You know, yes. And I mentioned earlier, I, we also on Focus on Liberia, we have uh, the ethnic group series where we have some scholars from these ethnic groups come and present the history and culture of their ethnic group. One thing that I've noticed is uh, the, the, uh, the culture is very, very similar. The stories mm -hmm. that I told, the folklore are very similar. Yes. So yeah. most of the time in Liberia, we see what divides us more than yeah. what unites us. Indeed. I'm thinking, you know, if we have those literature writings and those folklore published, you found out that somebody from um, from 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 Glay in you know, or Betuo in Nimba County yeah. is similar from somebody from uh, Palipo County. You know? Oh okay. yes, oh yes, oh, oh yes, Def definitely. But I mean, uh, and part of the division is is uh, part of the problem with this is ignorance, you know. And uh, yes, and 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 I hope one day that these these stories. And uh, we are, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to contribute in my own way because this Halingi, this Halle story, you know, is, 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 is part of that, that process, you know, this, mm -hmm. uh, if, if we can read and realize, oh my God, you know, we are, we are not war mongers. We're actually afraid of war. We're not people who like, who love blood shedding, you know? So if you can read that and see, oh my God, you know, there are people like this in this community who did everything to avoid this war. I mean, Halle's story is a reflection of the Liberian, the Liberian story, the Liberian war, the Liberian civil war. I mean, there were people who did everything or who were doing everything to bring peace in our country, yeah. you know? And, uh, and so, I mean, a child reading that book, we, we, we begin to look at the world in a, from a different perspective. Yeah, right. from a different yeah, because, I mean, we're talking about the savior story, which is uh, very, uh, which you can find in the, in the Jesus story and yeah. uh, in the Jewish stories, this Messiah. I, I have a question here on Facebook. Uh, uh, the question is from Dave Ja. Dave, uh, is there a Labyrinth Writers group or association you know of? If not, what are the steps being taken to have one? Uh, there are, uh, you have the Liberian Writers Association in Morovia. And uh, I was there uh, one time and I, I registered actually. And there are, I think a few in the United States, but we don't have a single uh, Liberian Writers Association that try to join us all, you know, that try, that combines all the, all the writers. There was this wonderful human being and uh, uh, Stephanie uh, Horton, a great intellectual, one of the, I've had the privilege, you know, to meet her, I mean, to, to get, to be in touch with her. Yeah. Uh, great human being, uh, I mean, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful person okay. who tried to bring us together Liberian intellectuals, artists, writers, you know, and she succeeded and founded the Sea Breeze. And the, the yeah. whole idea was to, to bring Liberian, Liberian intellectuals, thinkers, free thinkers together and artists together to share a, prof, a platform. And, uh, and uh, so she, 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 I mean, she, she started this initiative. So, uh, I mean, which I appreciate that. I mean, the, well, the first time we I talked to her, it was like a dream come true for me. Mm -hmm. So I hope I hope we can have that kind of platform. That we can have that kind of association to try to bring, you know, all these minds together. Not only writers but intellectuals, historians, mm -hmm. architects, you know, uh, doctors, and everything. You know, I see I see, I see that uh, there are some librarians doing incredibly well. When it comes to Liberian literature, one that comes to mind is uh, uh, Fort O'Neill. Uh, yes, O'Neill. O'Neill. Yes, I yes, I, I forgot to mention O'Neill. He has uh, he has a publishing has founded a publishing house, and also um, before I come, uh, I return to uh, 
uh, I'll come back to uh, uh, to O'Neill. I'd like to uh, to, to mention uh, Emma Emma Shaw, who uh, who founded Cotton Tree, a publishing house, and uh, but O'Neill has been very very active this past uh, few years in in in, in really. Uh, establishing a good publishing house and also re uh, really uh, stimulating Liberian literature. He has founded this great platform, the uh, Morovia Reach, and right. as and in which I mean writers like uh, Banagege and and uh, others have published books, and these books were, you know, presented or launched through Morovia Reach, and uh, and uh, even now. Um, uh, uh, I, I think I saw something today on Facebook regarding uh, regarding Moravia launch uh, Mor Moravia Reach. So it's uh, it's it's a wonderful platform. So things are happening, You're right. although not you know not in that large you know scale that we that we hope you know it should be. But I mean, it's there is a beginning. We have we have uh, right. a beginning. Yes. Starting right. point. If you if you think of um, Professor K. Moses Nambu, is like he's publishing almost a book every week. <laughs> yes, he's uh, yes yes. I I I uh, I've read some of his novels and uh, and uh, I, I appreciate him a lot. And uh, uh, I, I I was in Morovia uh, one time and I saw um, a novel he'd written. And uh, it was, I think, first edition, and I was, I was very lucky to have uh, to have uh, um, to have to, to, to have found that book, and uh, and he compiled some uh, nuggets of uh, uh, Liberian literature, African literature, and it's 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 a it's a great book, and uh, yes, uh, I, he is a great uh, you know a, a, a scholar and educator, uh, you know, and. Uh, he is uh, of profound uh, importance to, to Liberian literature, yes. And mm -hmm. so you see that uh, there are many, many, uh, now there are many, but there are people out there who mm -hmm. uh, great minds trying to help shape our way of looking at the world and thinking. There's a question here on Facebook from uh, Peter, Zumbo, he said, is there a bookstore in Liberia? If yes, where? And I think he means a, like a librarian, a bookstore of librarian authors. Yeah, there, there, there are bookstores. Uh, there are, I think, two books, bookstores on Camp Johnson Road. Uh, one is Long Man, uh, with this Long Man African Writer Series, uh, The Heinemann Things. And there's one bookstore uh, uh, owned by Wilder Moore. And uh, it's called one one more bookstore, and uh, yes, so there are bookstores in Morovia. I think I think they are even maybe four or five bookstores. Mm. Yes, yes. The, the, the other question, which is um, which I know the answer already, but I will ask it anyway. Do you get any support from the Liberian government? No. <laughs> All right. No, I don't. And, and what what level of support are you looking for? Not just for you, but for librarian writers from the government. Yes, I mean to uh, to to recognize the work uh, of uh, especially uh, of uh, 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 the work of uh, uh, Professor Nangwe, uh, Professor uh, Wesley, Patricia Jebe Wesley. And uh, on those librarians who under very, very difficult circumstances are trying to write because I mean, with all the luxury that we enjoy, especially in my case, I mean, I live in the West, so I don't worry about food, but there are writers on the ground in Liberia, like for example, Sam Milimono, uh, James Dualo, who are really, really suffering <coughs> and who have, I mean, sacrifice, despite all the things that they're going through, who sacrifice uh, their time, you know, and money to, mm. to invest in writing, which is one of the most difficult things in the world, to be able to 
write good stories that 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 only not not only I mean for themselves but for the world that people so many Japan can read the stories and like it. So I mean uh, that kind of support mm. is you know will be highly appreciated because they really 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 need it. You know I I I I. I don't know how the Liberal Writers Association in Morova is funded, you know, but this, 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 this minds. And once we start to do that, the government or other institutions start to do that, then we begin to see, we begin to produce, mm-hmm. um, you know, great talents because then, you know, we, you know, people say, all right, you know, I, I have a future in this. Right. Uh, Nigeria, a few years ago, I think five, six years ago, founded a literary prize, 100,000 US dollars by Nigerian writers. You know, this on a yearly basis, every year, a Nigerian, I mean, wins this prize, 100,000 mm. US dollars, you know, for a book written by Nigerian in Nigeria or in the diaspora. You know, so you have this 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 prize. We don't have a single literary prize in Liberia. I mean, it doesn't need to be a huge amount, but something that encourages school children or university students to say, "All right, I'm going to spend. I'm going to you know spend my time, and I, I, I'm going to do everything to write this, to 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 produce this book, uh, to produce a sh- book or a short story, mm-hmm. or even poem." Uh, and uh, I hope. You know, it can be recognized. You know, so the, 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 this this are the, 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 the kind of support, support you, that you, you will get. Liberian writers need. We need. You know, and uh, especially those on the ground in Liberia, they they are they are really, 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 they are really. facing difficulties. You know, because I mean, when uh, when I'm hungry, I'm not going to worry about. I mean, when I sit to write, I think. The sentences will not, you know, will not be clear cut. It will not, you know, it will not be honed like mm-hmm. other writers do, spending hours on a sentence to try to shape it. You know, I want to eat first, and then start thinking about what to do next. Right. You know, yes, and so they don't have that. Just, just writers don't have that. What's uh, about the the your support from other? fellow writer, especially the senior one, like you've been writing for some yes, time. I've been, I've been, I've been supporting, for example, uh, not on a regular basis, but I've been supporting Sa, for example, because I believe that Sa is one of the, the greatest talents in Liberia. If he's given the support, he can do wonders. I truly believe in that, you know, and, uh, and writers so like Uri Yohan Roberts, James Dualu, and others, you know, whose name I forgot to mention, you know, and uh, I have done, you know, it's not good to talk about, uh, you know, good deeds or something you do, you know, it's, you know, no, you know, but mm-hmm. I do contribute in my own way, you know, just, you know, a very small way, you know, mm-hmm. I do that, yes. And, and, and besides uh, that, so some maybe, some proof rooting, like uh, I was working on my own, uh, collection my civic book mm-hmm. and uh, so Namwe was the one who he did some proof reading he, even he wrote the uh, the foreword yeah to me right. that was a major support yeah, how I, like when writers assisting each other in that regards yes no I have uh, for example uh, I mean where to most book I I I I, I proof I proof read it and uh, I um, and I was I was involved I mean I gave some advice some years ago when she was writing this book and um, and Sa's stories. I mean, the, the story that he wrote that won the, the, that won the prize in Kenya. I was involved with this story like, I don't know, almost 10 years ago. So I, I like proofreading. I like, so if there's anyone out there, I mean, who has a story, uh, you need a feedback you know, and some kind of support in how to, you know, to structure the story. Uh, uh, novel, you can get in touch with me. It's not easy. I mean, it's not difficult to find me. You can find me, you Google me or Facebook, you know, and because that's, 
my own way of you know giving back you know sure. and uh because we we need that i mean librarian writers need that that support and uh even i was involved with O'Neill at one time and um uh and some of the uh the the, the novels he sent to me and mm -hmm. i read them and gave them my feedback and i like to be honest when it's not it's not good. I mean, when I think it's not good, because I might, I might say it's not good, but someone else is my, someone else might say that it's great. So if in my, you know, in my opinion, I would not say get rid of it. No, I was, I was, I was, I will show you, you know, ways how to improve on it. And, right. Um, in fact, yes. you were, you were recommended. My brother and I were working on our folk laws, and you were one of those who had recommended to uh, uh, to do some proof reading. But now yes. there's a question here also that uh, where can we find your materials? I know I visited your website. People looking for the books of Vamba Sharif, where do we go? Uh, you can go to my website. You can go to Amazon, uh, amazon.com. You can get them in the United States. You can, because they are distributed there. You can go to any bookshop in the United States, give my name and the title of my books, or just give my name. Maybe you can, you can search my name and you'll find the books. Mm -hmm. or go to one more bookstore in Morovia. You can find my books. Go to my website, it's there. And uh, your website uh, is? Publishers, Hope Road Publishing. Uh, or get in touch with me. All right. <laughs> to make, and to make so it there you have easier. it on, on, uh, on Focus on Liberia. If you have a book, if you have a work that you want uh, Vamba to prove re he's open, you can get in touch with him from our uh, Facebook, or you can uh, visit his website and also do it through Focus on Liberia. Indeed. Right. All right. <laughs> there's, a, there's another movement on Liberian colloquia, and I've seen some of those uh, poems that, that are very, very fascinating, you know, those things in Liberian English. Mm -hmm. I've seen uh, a book written by John Mark Shepard it's called uh, The Confused Traveler's Guide to Liberian English. Yeah. Also uh, read something on uh, NPR, the National Public Radio about this uh someone explaining and it's very fascinating and the person said well if librarian said the o at the end or man oh how and we say if the hello and say hello hello or hello, <laughs> man, she tried to make the difference why we say that and it's very very fascinating it's yeah. something for someone to explain it and then we are not even aware of what we do until somebody no no it. no no but but i mean i mean I mean, I would be, I would be so very happy to read a novel in, in Liberian colloquia. I mean, it would be, it would be like, it would be so very fascinating. Um, and 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 I mean, if if like a Liberian writer does that, he he would not, he wouldn't be the first, or she wouldn't be the first to do that. I mean, Nigerians, uh, Ken Saro Ken Saro wrote wrote uh, an entire novel that is seen as regarded as a classic, written and pitching in Nigerian English. You know, so your boy. So I mean, <laughs> so it would be very, very, very great to do that. I mean, because that that's it, I mean, I can be like in a crowd of a thousand people and when someone a librarian say, um, I, my man, you know, they are not there's library in that crowd. <laughs> You know, and the whole story was it that of, of an Englishman who went to like he, he started hearing people boy, 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 you know, and then he discovered it was a boiled egg. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know, so it's, it's I mean, I mean, and, and to use it in our novels, it could be great to, yeah. you mean, to, to play with these. With, with with our English in our novels. Right. Even yes. what, uh, what O'Neill is part of in Liberia is also, uh, this is what they call it, the Liberian colloquial movement, something like that. Mm. Colloquial really? takeover. And it's, really? it's, yeah, it's very, it's very beautiful. So what do you see as the future of Liberian literature? Uh, uh, I think I can look at the future with, with, with a little bit, of optimism, uh, mm -hmm. because you you when I look when I look around me, I see the like the the likes of uh, Howard Jande, uh, Gulaka, and Sa Wayatimur, Professor Wesley, Professor Nangwe, uh, Vasiki, who 
uh, wrote that beautiful memoir and, uh, and others who are really, really doing their best to shape uh, Liberian literature, but we're not many. And that's my worry. I'm, I, I hope there are many, many people who can come and write better books than we've ever written because that should be the nature of things that people who come, you know, uh, after us or people who grow up who are younger should write better books mm -hmm. than we who are, who are, who've been in the business for a while. I mean, and so, I mean, I want to read a librarian book that, that can really, really make me pause and in wonder, you know, and, uh, and some of these stories are already there, out there, but the more these stories are published, uh, the better for the future of Liberia. And I hope that the Liberian writers who really need support, the ones on the ground, can get these supports either from the government or from individuals who want to contribute, who, who love Liberian literature enough to contribute towards the development of that literature. Uh, that's my dream. And uh, I hope I have my dreams of, of my own um, hope to have a library in Liberia, in Morovia one day. Mm -hmm. It is accessible to, to, to all of us, all Liberians, you know, to be able to read some of these books uh, that have been written but are not accessible to Liberians, that these books can be made available there. And sure. uh, I hope that our government and our ministers and, uh, and those uh, in the position of power can embrace literature and I see it as, um, as, uh, as uh, something that, you know, can be used as kind of weapon or something or you know, as a source of wealth, you know, a source of uh, history and, uh, and pride, you know. And this is what I hope that they can, you know, that they can read. And these books and read these poems because it's when you read a line from a beautiful written poem, some of the lines that is a point, uh, 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 it's a line from one of the, 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 the collection of uh, uh, Professor Wesley that talks about this uh, loneliness and exile. You know, what does that feel? You know, being away from home. You know, it's beautiful rating. You know, it's a kind of meditation on exile. These, these, when you read these things, you know, then you understand. If you didn't leave Liberia, then you'll able be able to understand what the, what are the challenges that people who left, who fled the world, dealt with. You know, or experienced. That that's what make that literature makes these things possible. Fiction makes it. Poems makes it. Uh, makes it uh, possible. So I hope I hope uh, that uh, you know we can embrace librarian literature. Yeah, right. No, that, that's good because literature kind of brings up. Because I personally, uh, my brother Dave and I, we published a, a novel, The Notebook of a Warrior, in two thousand five, mm. and up to the time we wrote the book, I did not realize, and it was a story about a Liberian ex-combatant who fought the Liberian Civil War and was dying in a hospital in Guinea. Hmm. We, we were refugees in Guinea. So we wrote that story. Little did we know that we're actually writing about ourselves. Yeah, you see. Because we, we kind of, we told the story. So people who read it came and said, oh, we are sorry for what you went through. And we're like, no, it's not me. Hmm. Then coming to realize that it was actually our experience. Oh yes, oh yes, yes. When I when I when I when I read when I wrote *Land of My Fathers*, my first novel, it's not only a novel about friendship between uh, uh, an American Liberian or a settler Liberian and native, friendship between Harley Harlingi and Edward Richards. It's not only about that. But it's also reflected the, the story of my brother with whom I, I came to, to the Netherlands. When he read the story, Dennis, I didn't know that I was writing about my brother. I didn't know 
Right. He really, really, really. When he read the story, he told me, but Vamba, this is my story. This wow. is a story of longing, of, of loss. You know, uh, this is a man who uh, had a wife in Liberia. And because of the war, they were separated. He didn't know that, um, that she, whether she was alive or dead. And then I wrote a story about Edward Richard, who was born into slavery in the United States, and who met a girl during slavery, and he fell in love with this girl. But this girl was forced, like some people did uh, in the 19th century, some white people. She was free with the condition to return, to, to go to, uh, to Liberia. So the, 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 two, the, the two lovers were separated and they've been waiting for years for each other. Exactly the same story with my brother. He, he was waiting for years to reunite with his wife, you know? So, so when, he, when he read this, and only then, did I, rea- only then um, did I realize that I was actually writing about my brother. Wow. And it was, it was really, it was, it, was, it was a great feeling, you know? And, 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 then, and, then, and that's what <laughs> literature uh, does. You know, um, Boris Pasternak, the Russian writer, his father told him, you know, be honest, you know, in your writing and your enemies will never defeat you. Now he was not the, the importance of the enemies. I mean, it's it's not. I mean, the enemies were not important because it is about the writing. You know, try to be honest. You know, dig deep into yourself, and you find that humanity. And uh, and when you share it, people will appreciate it. People who have never read that. I mean, who have never experienced that, they will be able to empathize. You know, they, to identify with the characters in your novel. Mm-hmm. And and that's the power of literature. That is that's yeah. that's powerful. And uh, what a thing that we're missing since literature is not that popular. But uh, what are you currently working on? I'm uh, working on a novel set in Liberia, okay. in Morovia, <laughs> okay. and uh, it's, it's 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 a playful novel. I mean, I want to I want to experiment with things. I Mm, I'm writing from the perspective of a woman, and uh, so I want to see how it how it feels, you know, how far I can go with that, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, because that's also the power of literature. That I mean, yeah. a writer be you very can sensitive, anybody. You can be able to place yourself in different in different, you know, yeah. in different characters, you know. So that's what I'm I'm trying, and that's what I'm doing. I don't want to give, you know, much away. Okay. Wait, All right. I mean, look, until you read a novel. We look forward to reading that. So, uh, I mean, it's been a beautiful talking with you. Before we draw down our curtains tonight, if you have any final thoughts, please share. Yeah, I mean, I thank you very much for in- inviting me to uh, to this program, and I think it's a great initiative. Uh, and I hope there are, I mean, many, not only writers but historians, doctors. Uh, people from all walk of, of life can, you know, can have a platform on, uh, on, on this focus in Liberia so that they can share their stories, you know, and, and help, help to shape our, our destiny, our future. All right. And uh, it's been very wonderful talking with you. And uh, I've heard, you know, I've seen your work. Thank you so much for what you do. And uh, we're glad to have you on Focus on Liberia on behalf of all of us here from uh, Stephanie, from the Ascendi, all we work together here. We say thank you so much for joining tonight. And to our viewers across the globe, we say thank you so much for watching. We got people watching from Liberia and uh, some from the Middle East. Everyone is watching, we say thank you so much. And uh, to keep the program going, we want to encourage all our viewers, uh, if you can advertise with us so that we can keep this going. This is our way of giving back to Liberia. We say we are here to elevate to educate, to promote everything Liberia. And uh, Bamba, you are a big part of it tonight. I want to say thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, and uh, from all of us here at Focus on Liberia, we want to say thank you so much for watching. My name is Dennis Jam. We broadcasting from Atlanta, Georgia. And this time I say thank you, good night, God bless you. And we see you next time, six o'clock, Focus on Liberia next Sunday. Thank you and God bless.